Um, representing the 1960s, Eddie Foster, Monaghan High School. as the best blocker he'd ever seen during the 1967 and 68 seasons. The two-way star earned second team All-State at center as a junior while also playing a defensive tackle and was a first team All-State at end as a senior. He also made the Texas football's preseason super team that year at center. During his two varsity seasons, Foster made an All-State team at four different positions. The 6'4", 240-pound blue chipper signed with Oklahoma, where he opened holes for other Texas High School Football Hall of Fame members, Joe Washington, Greg Pruitt, Joe Wiley, and Jack Mildred. Foster also earned all Big 8 and All-America honors at offensive tackle. He played professional football with the World Football League's Jacksonville Sharks, 1974, and Birmingham Vulcans, 1975. Foster also played for the Canadian Football League's Saskatchewan Rough Riders in 1975. And now, please help me welcome Eddie Foster as he takes his spot in the Texas High School Football Hall of Fame. Yeah! What a privilege. What a privilege to be here tonight. What an honor. Especially for a lineman. He's here for lineman. Yeah! Of course, it is pretty neat that four of the guys I played with in college are already in here. Joe Washington, Joe Wiley, Greg Pruitt, Jack Milgren. You know, you can sometimes miss a block and still do okay with backs like that. <laughs> I want to think... All my friends from Monahans who are here tonight, uh, Coach Jim Segrist, some of my teachers, it's just amazing that they would show up for this. I'm so pleased with it. Classmates, teammates, even got some guys who played in the band here tonight. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> And we wanted some of those guys to play football. They were big, fast guys. They said, hey, during the Christmas break, we get to go play in the Orange Bowl. We go play in the Rose Bowl. We're on the bus 10 days with girls. <laughs> <laughs> kind of beat the old stinky Lobo bus. <laughs> the dirty uniforms after the game, coming back. But thank you all for being here. I have some friends from uh, OU and... Uh, I have the best OU fan in the world sitting at my table tonight, an 80-year-old gentleman named George Bradfield. We have been friends for over 40 years, and he got up this morning, drove down, said he wouldn't miss it. And every Monday morning, he comes by my office, and um, we discuss Coach Stoops' mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, sometimes that gets leaked over to the athletics department, and they change a few things in the middle of the season. What we talked about a couple of weeks before. It is so much fun to do that. This guy walked on and made the team at OU in 1950, and he is a good friend of mine. I'm glad to have him here. I have a, a lot of guys I can't take the time to tell about them, but it just blows me away that they would show up here tonight and be a part of this. Now, my college roommate was Joe Wiley, who was inducted here in the 2008 class. We became good friends at OU, and you know, when you room with somebody for a number of years, you, you get to where you know them, and you just don't care about their bad parts. You're just grateful for the good things they do. <laughs> I'm reminded of the pastor who was urging his congregation to get their hearts right with the Lord and to confess that stuff they hadn't confessed before and so people were doing this and that. One guy stood up and just out loud he confessed something just really bad. <laughs> and the pastor looked at him and said, 
Oh, brother, I don't think I'd have told that. <laughs> <laughs> well, every once in a while, Joe and I do that to each other. <laughs> Man, that's TMI. Don't tell me. <laughs> I like you the way I knew you before. <laughs> but that's the kind of relationship we have. Steve Jones was my quarterback in junior high. We got back together. He lives in Tulsa. I live in Norman. We get to spend a lot of time together now. Ray Poston uh, played left guard when I played center, and he keeps all the Monahan's Lobos together on the internet. He tells some things he shouldn't tell. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Only those Lobos know that. But anyway, I want to thank all my coaches, my teachers who prepared me for college from Monahan's. Uh, without their fundamentals and the basics they put into me, uh, I, I certainly wouldn't be here tonight. I remember my sophomore year in college, there's a question whether I'd be redshirted or not. Now, remember, way back when, uh, you didn't get to play as a freshman. It wasn't until the 1972 season that a freshman could play in, in college at D1. And... So my sophomore season, 1970, I'm playing, running second team defensive tackle, and I'm thinking I've made the traveling squad, and right in the last scrimmage, I got sucked into a tackle trap just as I was reaching for that half bag to grab him. Our left tackle, Moose Jensen, he hits me from the side. It hit, he hit me so hard, I flew sideways five yards, and nobody had ever hit me or hurt me like that before. And you know who my defensive line coach was? Jimmy Johnson, who later coached the Dallas Cowboys. Coach Johnson come running over. Now, and you won't believe it, he had a, he had a flat top back then. He didn't have all that hairspray hair. People used to make fun. He comes running over there. Big Ed, Big Ed, are you okay? Picks me up, and I'm, you hear this, and it's funny. But I was looking through my ear hole. <laughs> my whole right side was hurting. I couldn't even breathe. He said, dang, son, you've got to get tougher. You've got to get tenacious. You've got to get ferocious. And I said, what's her number? <laughs> out of, out of. The next day, they decided to wrench her. The next spring... They moved me to the offensive tackle. I hated that. I, hated, I didn't know anything about playing offensive tackle. I didn't know a thing about blocking the way they wanted me to. First day of spring practice, go look at the depth chart. I'm 15. We had five teams in spring practice. Now, you coaches know that's a lot of guys to work with. I'm 15. I don't know nothing. All I know is what my dad told me. Do what your coaches say and give effort. Try hard. I don't, my brother Jerry's here. He was the toughest football player ever played at Monahan's High School. He will tell you in our sleep, we close our eyes and we hear our dad saying, try hard. Anyway, all I could do was what the coach said and try hard. Start of the second week of spring practice, I go check the depth chart. I'm 14. I moved up. Well, some guy broke their leg. <laughs> okay, all I'm doing is trying to do what they tell me and trying to give effort. Third week, go look at the depth chart. Monday afternoon, right before practice. I'm on the third team. Some guy quit. <laughs> it's okay, I'm on the third team. <laughs> The fourth week of spring practice, I go check it out. I'm on the second team. Actually, I beat somebody out. <laughs> the fifth week, right before the big spring game, go check the depth chart, and I'm starting. Call home to Dad. It's hard to get a compliment out of my dad. He wasn't unkind, but he was just pretty stingy. <laughs> and he said, what have I always told you? said, try hard. He said, that's right. That's worked out for you, hasn't it? 
So then started the next several years and, and had a good career. My three varsity years, we were 32, 2, and 1. We finished two in the nation twice, number three once. And I owe it all to what I learned at Monahans High School. The biggest blessing I could have had was my dad getting transferred by Halliburton <clears throat> from Duncan, Oklahoma to Monahans, Texas. Those people were special. They gave me what I needed to compete at a higher level. Now, I just want to share a couple of verses with you. Ecclesiastes 9.10 was ingrained in me many years ago. It's what my dad said a little bit different way. It says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. I found out that, that works pretty good. And then Galatians 6.9 says, do not grow weary in doing well. For in due season, you shall reap if you do not lose heart. Another version says, if you don't give up. All of you coaches, all of you former players, all of you connected with Texas high school football, you know many times you're just a step away from success and somebody gives up. And somebody gives up and it doesn't work. But those who take that extra step, it pushes you into the different level. I want to thank the board tonight for allowing me to be part of this. When Coach Joseph called me in December and said, hey, pal, guess what? You're going to be inducted into the Texas High School Hall of Fame. My response was, that's the best Christmas gift I've had in years. How neat, Coach. Thank you for thinking that of me. <clears throat> then when I hung up, I cried for about five minutes. <laughs> it felt pretty good. It felt pretty neat. And I just thank all of you for letting me be a part of this. This, uh, for Texas high school football players, this is a dream. And it is just so cool. And by the way, Florida can have their high school football players Pennsylvania can, Ohio can, California can, but the West, best ones in America are from Texas. Yes. Yes. sooner with our next and shiny the Texas Longhorns. <laughs> in the 1970s, Donnie Little, Dickinson High School. 